bloodthirsty demon stalked the night, culling the humans. Two heroes arose, as close as brothers, yet divided by a bitter betrayal. The war has begun. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boiter and today we're taking a look at The Core. This is the fifth book of five in the Demon Cycle by Peter V. Brett. And this one, as you probably know, is, uh, well, it's got a different cover. There is a reason for that because this is a advanced review copy and you probably know this as well. Well, the book came out last year, so it's not very advanced, this review, is it? No, this is the actual UK cover, which has got this demon, big demon, because this is exactly what everything has been leading up to, the big demon war, humans versus demons. So let's just find out exactly what happened. <laughs> the core, yes, exactly. What is it all about? Now, I said that, you know, we would find out what happens. Well, we're not going to. No, we don't do spoilers here, not in these Friday fantasy shows, not the review shows, no. But I will give you a bit of a premise. If you're watching this, you've probably read books one to four. But if not, if you've not read any of the books, basically what's happened is the whole premise to all of the books are that the demons, there's these horrible demons or callings as they're known, they live, so is suspected, underground in the core of the earth. And at night they come out and they start attacking and eating humans. Now this has been happening for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and as such humans have actually decided to you know, hold their own by creating these powerful magical wards which are kind of like you know, little squiggles that have got powerful energy that run through them. And they have developed them into a way that they can't actually attack with the wards. They don't do any physical damage as such, but what they do is they actually defend. So they have warded certain towns and certain places so that the demons can't actually get into and penetrate the warded circle. So that's the premise. Now that has basically broadly speaking two sets of humans if, if i could put it like that one is the five cities or no the three cities i should say and there's um basically five of those and the sort of they cover basically anything that isn't a, a culture which is known as the correct i'm terrible at pronunciations as you know if you're regular viewers and they're like the desert people so they've got a desert culture going on and so the humans are broadly in the in this series divided into the free city humans or the desert people. I'm just going to say the desert people uh, because I can pronounce that. Um, and that's kind of where the cultures are. And then they've got very different cultures and there's a clash that happens between the two humans. So really there's three sides here that are, at, are battling against each other. You've got the free cities versus the desert people versus, and together though, they obviously want to attack the demons because everybody is afraid of the demons. And quite rightly, because these demons are fierce. There's all different types of demons as well throughout the whole series. Um, you know, rock demons, wind demons, sea demons, air demons, there's all different types. They've all got kind of different strengths and weaknesses. And in the last book, they actually, there was these mind demons, which seem to then control other demons. So then the demons become organized. And once that happens, that's when the prophecy, there's a prophecy that, that is out there that sort of says, well, there's gonna be this huge war and who knows, because the demons start to get organized, they're actually gonna find better ways of, um, and more efficient ways of killing the humans. But also in this prophecy, there is going to be a deliverer. And one is uh, the one that's going to come and save humankind from the demons. Now there's Arlene Bales, who is from one of the free cities from the Hollow, uh, known in a little village as the Hollow. And he never claims to be the deliverer, but he actually works out. He does these wards that actually attack demons. So what he does, he becomes known as the Painted Man, or I think in the US it's called the Warded Man, but it's the Painted Man, and he puts these wards all over him because then he can go out into the night and actually attack the demons, which nobody ever has done before. But there's also another 
person that he actually claims to be the deliverer and he is the uh, the king or the emperor of the desert people his name is uh, Jardim at ja sorry Jardar I think that's how you pronounce it and um, he's a warrior and he also he, but he actually claims to be the deliverer now Arlene and the warrior they cross paths and there is a bit of a bitter betrayal that happens and that's what sets the two sides against each other now this book this is so that's the setup this is where we approach this book so they're on the verge they both realize the two deliverers if you like both realize that in order to actually defeat the demons if they're divided they will both lose both sets of people will lose so that's where we're at then um and yeah shall i say it? no i'm not going to say it. i don't want to spoil anything so there are several themes now as, as you probably saw at the beginning this book is huge it is over 700 pages long so there's bound to be several themes that run through this book one of the main themes is loss and that, you know, that kind of has cropped up in the other books as well. But this seems to be more so because there's several, key, well, I don't want to give any spoiler away, but several kind of key figures that either go missing or they lose their life. So it's, and, and it focuses more on how do you cope with the loss of somebody either going missing or, you know, death. And it sort of explores, I guess, the comparison of, is it not easier, but you know, there's a different type of grief that you would have if someone's missing, because I guess there's still that bit of hope that they're still out there and that they one day would come back. Whereas obviously if they've died, at least you kind of know that they've died and you can hopefully start to grieve and go through that process and maybe get to some sort of closure with that. I guess when somebody you love dies, there's never really any closure, but at least you kind of know what's happened to them. So it does explore that. And I thought that's quite an interesting comparison. You know, what does it feel like when somebody you love and care for has actually gone missing as opposed to them actually dying? So that that theme is quite central and it runs all the way through the book and the other thing that kind of tags into that is that how much does a loss actually motivate you to to achieve what you want to achieve does that spur you on do you then try to you know reach what their goals were do you try and you know, accomplish something that they were trying to accomplish in their name in their honor how much does that actually drive you forward so i quite like that aspect of well of how much does it affect you do you just you know do you you know do you grieve and then just get on with your life normally or do you actually use that to spur you on you know presumably to to, to better achievements in your life and then so with the theme of death and loss there is also a theme of new life and that's a really nice counterbalance because obviously nobody really wants to read what, you know, nobody really wants to read something that's always happy and that the whole book is all happy and jolly, but equally nobody wants to read something that's all death and gloom and doom. So to balance it with new life, and again, I don't want to give any spoilers, but there is new life that crops up in here as well. And so it's looking at what does the arrival of a new life into someone's own life, what effect does that have on them? You know, a new baby coming into your life, does that disrupt you? Are you resentful of it? You, are you grateful for it? Did you want it? Is it happened by accident or is it something, you know, will it will it divide your family? Will it unite your family? It all depends on the circumstances around it. And, you know, again, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but there is that what also happens with the new life storyline is that is the, is the, as I say, the acceptance can people accept a big change such as a baby into life and does it have more consequences than just your local family especially if you're you know a king or a queen or you're you know an elder in a village does that make a difference i guess because there's that you know inherent you know that person may become the leader of your local community so obviously does it have a wider effect and if there's, you know, if, if does a newborn actually be considered as an outsider? Does, does, an, does you know, because people might start resenting a newborn as well. And can, how strong is a mother's love then, or a father's love? How, can that overcome other people's prejudices? So again, there was a real strong theme there that ran and really complemented the theme of death and loss. But as I said, there's also not just about the baby about being an outsider there's also 
other outsiders as well. What the big the theme because there's these two factions of humans. Obviously, they've got different cultures. So you always, you know, there is that theme of the other, fear of the unknown, fear of an, another different culture. And there's lots of stereotypes that can come up about other cultures. And you know, are they are they as good as you as your culture? You know, there's all those prejudices that crop up. So again, that's another theme. And it also tackles, there's a smaller theme within that as well, which tackles the small theme of outsiders, but also being outcasts. So not only if it's a different culture, but even within that culture, if you break the rules, you can become an outcast. You know, if you go against what the normal th way of thinking are, what the rules are and what the laws are, you can also be pushed out and become an outcast. So then it also looks at, well, what does that do to a human? If you've been shunned by your community, does that corrupt you further? Or do you try to prove yourself a better person to want to come back into that community? So I like that small, like, kind of tag in small theme as well that tags in to the whole concept of other, you know, the other culture, the fear of a different culture. So you've got, there's lots of differences. So a lot of, a lot of the storylines do concentrate and, and, and differences seems to run through the theme as well. So there's a lot of discussion about the difference between humans and the different cultures, but not only that, but humans and demons. Are they so different? Now you've got the mind demons that actually think, you know, and actually have strategy. Well, are they just like us? You know, are they just looking after their own demons? Are they just looking after their own survival? I guess you could, in, in, in our world, look at that as animals. You know, what are the difference between humans and, and an animal? You know, they're just as intelligent. They're just as caring. They're just as loving. They want to protect their own family. So that's kind of, it was a nice theme that they had through there about the consideration. You know, humans actually consider demons not as monsters but actually like themselves you know they are creatures that have wants and needs and issues just like themselves so i really liked that you know the way that they even were considering well do demons have emotions and my reaction is well i think they do i think every living being you know creature whatever it is has emotions surely i mean to me that just is instinctual it feels obvious but i really like that that it was an extra layer it was a nice subtle layer that came in there as well and also the one savior theme as well and in fantasy there is that prophecy that there'll be one savior that comes along and everything will be all right and hunky dory well i like the fact that there's two and there's one that doesn't want to be and it's not claiming to be the savior and then there is one that claims to be the, the saviour. And there's that interesting dynamic of, well, actually, both have got merits. Both you could say, look, the, well, the prophet clearly states it's this. And I really like the fact that they're both from different cultures. And it just, I guess, proves that there's a uniting factor that actually we're all saviours. We all should take responsibility for our own actions and then we can save ourselves. Yes, you need support. Yes, you need to all work as a team. So again, there was that interesting dynamic of, well, what is a saviour and questioning the nature of what actually a saviour is. And I guess for me, there was very much a, a, you know, a, a Christian connotation here with Jesus. You know, Jesus, I don't think ever, well, I, I think it once maybe he claimed to be the son of God but you know he, he he was like saying no look you've got to look after yourselves I'm just going to show you the way but I'm, I'm not going to be around here you know well forever I'm getting on dangerous territory here but do you know what I mean it's like you've got to have responsibility so I can show you the way but you've actually got to do this for yourself so I really like that theme as well so overall what did I think well I had mixed feelings about this book there are lots of aspects that I liked about it, but there was one or two aspects that kind of left me feeling a little bit, I kind of needed a bit more. What I really liked about it was I love the characterization. I love the way that uh, Peter V. Brett actually writes the characters. I really think he gets into their minds. I really think they're believable. And he writes, well, from my point of view, he writes females very well. Um, and, you know, and again, there's a mixture of female types. There's a mixture of male types. Not all male types are heroic and, you know, never cry and all of that. There's a good blend of humanity in there and that's kind of what you want from an author you want well-rounded characters that all have loves desires emotions feelings thoughts and wants all of that and I love that and you can really emotionally connect with characters and I think that is crucial for any book to work that is absolutely crucial I really love the quality of writing I really like Peter V Brett's style it's very economic it really flows 
Um, he's got a, you know, a nice sense of humour that creeps in there. It's not, you know, and he's not a narrator narrator. You don't really think that this is the stories are being narrated. It's actually unfolding as you read it. So I really like that about it. It's engaging, his style of writing, and there's a real clarity to it. Um, he's really, and we got that right from book one, actually, with, of The Demon Cycle, it, 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 and it really is consistent, and that's what I like about it. There's no, you know, there's no soggy bits, if I can put it like that, in the book. Um, I really love the whole demon calling concept. I really like that, the fact that demons are rising from the earth and we have to fight them. We, it's our own, you know, but, but we've put up with it. I really like that aspect of it. It's a slight twist, you know, on, on, on a fancy genre there. And I love the storylines. They're strong, they're believable stories. And I really, really loved the way that the whole series developed and pushed and pushed and pushed the whole concept, storyline and characters further. My reservations, it's too long. It is too long for me. You know, this is over 700 pages now. Yes, if you're really into a world, you really want to exist in it, you really want to love it, you really want to be in there and get more and more and more of it. But for me, ah, I wanted to get to the nub of what the story was. Now, I'm assuming you've read book four, I don't know, I don't know if I should say it, but, the, but book four, there was a setup, And I wanted that straight away in this book and I didn't get it. There were a few storylines that I just felt weren't necessary. Again, I don't really want to go into spoilers, but it just kind of bogged it down a bit. And I just wanted to go, right, yeah, but what about the battle between, you know, the humans and the demons? What about that? I want to get to that because it becomes really personal. And I wanted to see, I wanted to follow the people involved in that battle more. I felt they were absent far too much in this. But saying that, what we did get was all very interesting but I felt maybe that could be a separate book or, you know, or just not there. I did enjoy those bits, but I just, there was always in the back of my mind, get to the point, get to cut to the chase. So I just felt a little bit like, okay, but then when we did get to the chase and we did cut to the bits where we're actually going right now, we're going to go and attack these demons. We're actually going to, you know, have the big battle. It was great, I really enjoyed it. And it really, for me, it felt a satisfying ending. So it kind of pulled it back. So what I would recommend is, yes, obviously if you've read book one to four, you're probably going to carry on reading it. Why not? I'm a completionist. I wanted to know what happened. And I would just say be prepared for some of the storylines to just kind of carry on and you think, is this really anything to do with anything? You just bear that in mind because there is, for me, I did find the ending very, very satisfying. So there we go. Book five, The Core by Peter V. Brett. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you love that review. I just want to have a quick apology. I am very, very sorry that I didn't get this reviewed in time for the launch. So just want to say thank you so much for uh, Harper Voyager for sending me an advanced copy. Just, you know, I was really busy and it's a big book and etc. etc. But it was for me, it was worth, you know, I didn't want to rush reading this either because there's lots of, there's a bit of complexity going on with all the characters and the storyline. And I really don't like to rush reading books because I want to, you know, give the review a fair crack. I want to give the book a fair crack. So there we are, book five of five of The Demon Cycle. I'll just quickly go through. Book one was The Painted Man in 2008, or in America it's The Warded Man. The Desert Spear, 2010. The Daylight War, 2013. The Skull Through Throne, 2015. And The Core was published in 2017. In the same universe, there is novellas. The Great Bazaar and Other Stories, which was published in 2010. Bri Brayron's Gold, 2011. Mud Boy, 2013. Messenger's Legacy, 2014. And Baron, which is coming out, I think it might just be out in 2018. I'm hopefully gonna dig into these novellas because I, as I say, I do love the world that Peter B. Brett has created. Until next time, remember to keep it unreal, especially.